the students pick and why? All right, so our scholars selected uh, a story on Juneteenth, correct? Um, and so um, why? It really had a lot to do, and I know that this may uh, get covered in our, you know, in our, in our combo here, um, but where we were at the time of the school year, kind of like where, you know, what the energy was like on social media, uh, what we had been studying, and also really kind of like what jumped out at them in our social studies class throughout the year that kind of made them feel like, whoa, hold up. I didn't know this about the Emancipation Proclamation. What are you really saying to us here, Lajas? You know, uh, so it kind of all just worked out together. It was like the timing was 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 perfect for it. And with Biden signing that new bill into law, and really what they really expressed to me was like, if you don't traditionally celebrate this holiday on June nineteenth, you may not get the underlying meaning. So. What I did was I went out into the community for one of the celebrations and spoke to the people there. So that that story that was derived from the students, it was, you know, not only to show them that I'm listening to them and, you know, reflecting back to me, to them what they were asking for, but also for people outside the community and who don't normally do those celebrations to educate them on it as well. And it just like married, you know, those two issues so well. What did you think the students gained after that, after you showed them um, the, the final product? Inspiration. Um, you know, one young lady uh, is, is considering, you know, uh, like how our young sister said, you know, she's excited to seeing you on there. But one young lady is really considering, like, you know, writing or getting into, uh, you know, news. Um, and so, you know, she's thinking about whatever high school she goes to, like trying to see what the after school programs are like there. Uh, because I was like, you got a strong voice. Like you could put that voice on stage or on camera. Um, and you could do that in, a, in many different ways. Um, so inspiration is one thing. Um, but also like validation, like they feel like, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, most of the time our children feel like what they're learning, especially in history classes is rote. Right. It's like I got to learn this to kind of pass this, you know, um, but with this experience, they felt like what I learned prepared me to be able to share in this experience and be able to tell this story. And now I feel like this was worth it. Right. Like this was a challenging school year. Also, though, you know, they started fully virtual. Then, you know, we went hybrid. So um, inspiration, validation and just kind of like excitement right like those are the things i think they took away from this like they were inspired they felt like yeah and yeah I, I, they were happy with it and also what i noticed was um they took away from that is like the democracy of how asking something from your community asking something from mm -hmm. your local media even your councilman going forward in the future when they get older these are all skills and tools that they can be able to use because they said okay mercedes sat down with us you know, listen to what we had to say and did this story. What else can I, what other change can I affect in my community by speaking to someone that has this, you know, platform mm -hmm. and getting that out there? Yep. On that last question, give us one to go. How does student-centered journalism shift power in your space? So the question, how, how does student-centered journalism shift power in our space? So in my space is the classroom. Right. So, I mean, really, um, interestingly enough, I kind of gave them all the power. Right. Like, I, I don't I don't like to say that I'm teaching my scholars. Um, I guide them. Um, I facilitate, you know, um, you know, but even when you all were coming to visit. Right. I'm like, y'all are going to meet and greet them at the door. Y'all are going to bring them up and welcome them. Like this classroom is your space and this is yours. And as you all remember, I was pretty busy too, right? So like it was a lot of making sure that they understood like they are really leading this. So yeah, student centered journalism, but the students are really supposed to be leading this. And, you know, sure, they need a couple little, you know, uh, uh, questions from us to get them going or some comments from us to get them going right um but really in terms of how this shifted the power in my space it just continued to empower the students right continue to make them feel like they are leading this they are at the center of this but they're really the ones leading right like 
I would jump in every now and then and give my two cents, but like this is really about you, right? So shifting the power in our space is really just about making sure that they understand their power in this space. And how it shifted power in my space, I saw those changes immediately because it prioritized the mm. stories that were important to your students because that week I had two other stories that were already one I was already working on and one that was coming on the way and I put those on hold for that week mm. so that we could go in and we could do the Juneteenth I added a little bonus in there because people were talking about the um, gardens and how yeah. that gives back to the community I did that one as well and so it, it kind of had me put those issues that were important to your students on a platform mm. and also had my company see uh, the editors and everybody there that this is something that also needs to take precedence and priority and they were like run with it yeah that's great 